Hello, I am trying to get everything set up. So hold on for one second. And I actually have to go live um, because I'm learning all kinds of new things about YouTube. Um, welcome, by the way. <laughs> um, I realized that uh, I set up this um, live stream on, let's see. I set up the live stream on my laptop and but I wanted to try out streaming um, on my phone and so I actually need to um, go live on my laptop <laughs> and tell people that it's actually over here so let me just do that really quickly and let's see if I can figure out how to do this. Oh, hi, welcome. Um, I am realizing, I, I just was explaining, if you didn't hear it, I am, um, I am, I set up my live stream on my, like the upcoming live stream on my computer, but I actually wanted to live stream on my phone. So that's what you're watching right now is the phone, like the overhead um, shot. So I just need to try to go live on um, my actual, um, my actual laptop so that I can, here we go. So I can tell anybody who's waiting over there what's going on so give me one second i'm going to be doing it on two two different ones here hi um welcome to this live stream this is just a quick update that um i actually set this live stream up on my computer but wanted to shoot on my um phone so i'm actually this is not going to be the true live stream for it so i'm going to get started over on the other one that is titled actual binding prep work and i'll show you how to um, do all of the prep work for some japanese staff bindings that i'm going to do a tutorial on later so i hope if you are seeing this you will hop over to the one that says actual book binding um, prep work so i will see you soon bye okay all right well thank you for sticking around we're three minutes in i will try to edit that out <laughs> if i can um, but here we go we've got one live stream going and what i'm going to show you today is um, the prep work for a tutorial like a formal tutorial that i'm going to film later this week and um, i like taking my time and chatting about all the different um, materials I'm going to use, everything like that. So what I want to show you to start today is just the um, kind of the finished result of what one of the tutorials is going to be. This is called Japanese Stab Binding. There are many different stitches. This one that I'm showing you here is called the Noble Binding. And um, it's an interesting binding because it allows you to stitch together individual sheets. So these are all just single sheets of paper. There are no signatures. Let's see if you can see that. There are no signatures here. It's just single flat sheets of paper. So in certain situations, that's really helpful to have. Um, so this is one of the bindings that I'm going to show you. And then the other one, um, the pattern is called hemp leaf. And it's a little tough to see on here. That's one thing I want to point out when you are picking your paper for your covers that this is a really beautiful decorative stitch but it gets kind of lost in the beautiful decorative paper so um let me show you what it looks like on a template so you can see so this is what the stitch actually looks like this is again called the hemp leaf stitch and so when you're thinking about the materials you want to use for this, you'll see what I choose today. Um, I have a couple different options for papers over here. So just kind of keep that in mind that when you have something so decorative, it might be a little bit harder to see on a patterned paper. Um, 
but you can see that for these, this stitch, it still kind of gets lost, but it's not as decorative, so it's not as big of a deal. And then this one, because the background color is so much lighter and the stitching is darker, it doesn't get lost at all. It really pops. So this is kind of where we're going um, at the end of this, but I wanted, I wanted you to see it so that you have it in mind. Um, one other interesting thing, when I learned how to do this, I was told that you always folded your papers, your cover papers. So you can see that's folded, but then it, on this end, it's, let's see if I can kind of pull them apart here. You can see the covers are cut at this end, but folded here. So um, it's one way to make both the cover a little bit thicker, but also have nice paper on the inside as well. So that's what I'm gonna be doing today. Um, and we are going to start, I have two different papers that I'm gonna show you. If you want to follow along, the materials that you'll need for this are paper for the pages, which I realized, just realized I did not grab. Um, so I'll grab that in a second. I'm just going to be using regular copier paper. Actually, let me grab that right now. So this is just eight and a half by 11 regular thin copier paper. Um, this is what I would recommend, especially if it's your first time binding um, in this style, because you're going to be sewing through these little holes here. And um, a thinner paper is just gonna be a little bit easier. So I'll be using this just regular text weight copier paper. Um, it's maybe a little on the thin side, but that's what I'm using for my pages. Um, as you get more comfortable with it, or if you're getting into like a little bit more of a specialized binding where you wanna have a bigger hole and maybe use ribbon to bind it, you know, you can get into thicker papers, nicer papers, but um, okay, paper for pages. And then paper for your covers. I've got two different papers I will be using. Um, this one here is a handmade paper. It's got this golden print on it. Um, and I've been, in some of my other projects, I've been using it in this direction. But I think for today, I'm going to use it in this direction so that when we're folding it, it's kind of going across the cover. Um, and I am going to be making all my books in a rectangular, um, like landscape format. So this is going to be my cover for my noble binding, because I think it'll be kind of similar to this one where the pattern on the cover has a lot going on, but this one, um, you know, the, the binding itself will probably stand out. The one thing I'm already realizing with this is I'm going to have to figure out what color thread I want to use for this one. Um, so I'm using this paper that it's, it's a handmade paper. It's not washi. Um, washi paper is really lovely to use in kind of the traditional paper that you would use on the covers. Um, this one is going to be a little bit bulkier. It's just not as soft and supple, even though it is handmade. Um, but I'm making that decision, even knowing that, that this is what I'm going to use. And then for the other one, um, the hemp leaf one, I'm going to just use, this is a, it's got like a very, very fine pattern on here. Um, I'm going to be using a, just, it's a piece of scrapbooking paper. So it's 12 inches by 12 inches. And um, it's a, a little bit, it's not really thick cover stock, but it is considered cover stock. So a little bit thicker of just a regular plain paper. So if you want to give this binding a try and you don't have fancy paper, I highly recommend just trying it with, you know, what you have. Um, this one here that I made too, this is also just a scrapbooking paper. This one's a little bit thicker than this blue, but again, I, I'm a big proponent of use what you have to test it out and um, use that for your first stuff. So, um, the other thing that I will be kind of helping you prepare is um, sewing templates. I really like these when I am working on um, working on these style bindings, especially for um, like the hemp leaf stitch. I have a couple different templates that I just keep so that when I'm getting ready to stitch again, I can just take them out quickly and then real remember like where I need my 
holes to be and all of that. So um, I'm going to start with helping you prep the materials for your books, but then we'll do the templates at the very end. Um, making a template is also a great way to practice the stitch before you actually do your stitching on your true book. So let me just look at my... Um, list to make sure that I have everything. Oh, um, the th one material that you'll need for your templates is a piece of cover stock. So if you have um, a piece of cover stock, in, it doesn't matter what color, um, but just a single sheet will we'll be able to cut two um, different templates out of that one. So that's the last one. And then of course, a cutting material. I like to use a utility knife um, just because it's a little bit easier to hold um, as opposed to like a thinner X-Acto um, handle, but that's pretty much it. Um, so let's get started. This is the, um, this is a square piece of paper and it's machine made. So I need to find the grain on this one. And I usually do that by just kind of bending and seeing which one lays more flat. Okay, it's definitely this way. So I want the grain to be going um, up and down on my cover. So I'm what I'm going to be doing is cutting one long piece of paper that will then get folded in half. And for my examples, I want my height to be four and a half inches. So keeping in mind, grain is going this way. I'm just going to turn it slightly so that I can cut it. Um, and I'm going to use my gridded mat here and line it up on the 20. And then I can put my ruler against the 24 and a half to cut my sliver. Let's get this out of the way. So I'm just using a metal um, cork backed ruler and this is why I like these um, gridded mats because you can just use the dimensions on the mat. Okay so now this is four and a half inches here but it's 12 inches long so I'm going to set that to the side for a second. And I'm going to cut my other piece that will be for my back cover. And then we will trim these down so that they are, um, oh wait, actually, no, I made it so that it would, we would have a six inch wide thing. So I'll show you the next steps in just a second. So we have this little extra piece and if you follow me for any amount of time over on Instagram, you know I make these like little freebie books that I um, just put in any orders. So this piece right here, this extra is destined to become one of those books or probably two of those books. Um, okay, so now we have our long piece. Our grain is still going tall because we want to have our fold going with the grain. Um, and we don't need to cut it down because I did, well, let's double check that it's actually 12 inches um, across. Sometimes the measurements are a little bit off. This one's not, it's 12 inches. So when we fold it, each cover will be six inches wide by four and a half inches tall. So these are all set right now. Um, so I'm going to set these to the side. I won't fold them in this video. Like I mentioned, I'm prepping all of this stuff so that I can make a full like filmed tutorial. Um, and I will hopefully have that live by next week is the plan. So um, for this one, this paper poses a little bit more of a challenge. Um, I've made the decision to use the pattern going in this direction, which means that I have essentially decided to ignore whatever the grain direction is. Sometimes I do this because it's just nice to be able to um, have it uh, in the pattern the way I want it to go. Um, and then, you know, it it's the paper is not so super thick that it's really going to matter. Again, this one's a sample book. So, um, if I were making this for a client, I might reconsider that um, and take into account the grain. But because this is a sample and I just want it to, I want the pattern to go a certain way, that's what we're going to do. But this one also has an uneven edge um, around it. So 
Um, earlier, I was, you know, cutting other pieces for a different project. So I do have a straight edge here, and I know that um, four and a half inches plus four and a half inches is nine. So what I'm going to do is um, line up this straight edge with one of my lines here, and I'm going to line up this little corner where the print is starting and line that up here, and then nine inches down i'm going to go across and just cut it with stuff like this i often will cut a little bit bigger than what i need and then trim it down as needed so let's get that lined up and actually i'm going to cut a little bit that's like an eighth of an inch above just in case this is not an even line up here okay so There's nine inches right here. Okay. And just before I cut, even though this looks straight to me, I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I just like to double check. Um, this is usually, I try not to cut since this is the material that I'm using, I usually try to cut on the opposite side of the blade, but I'm not gonna turn everything around and remeasure it, so I'm just gonna go really slowly and try to make sure that my blade is staying right up against my ruler. Because sometimes you can like, your hand will slip and you don't want it to cut into the piece of paper that you are trying to use. All right, so let me put this to the side. So now we have a piece that is approximately nine inches tall. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just make sure that it is nine inches tall and cut off that excess. And then I'll trim it down to 12 inches and then we'll cut it in half. see that okay so you can see it did have about an eighth of an inch of that print all along the edge so it was pretty even but you just never know I've used enough papers that sometimes it's you know not printed straight on there um, okay and then I'm gonna cut it down to 12 before I cut it in half because having one excess strip that's full and long like this is better for my scraps and then having two shorter pieces. Um, like I said, I like making tinier books from my scraps, so I try to keep that in mind when I'm cutting as well. So again, just lining this up and 12 inches should be right here. But again, I'm going to just double check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and then 12 is under there. And so you can see in this example, I've got the ruler guarding the piece of paper that I want. So if my hand slips while I'm cutting, it's going to cut into what is my scrap. Okay. Set that to the side. All right, now I want to cut this piece into four and a half inches. So um, we'll do that one last step, and then we will have these covers prepared for the tutorial. Okay, so one, two, three, four and a half. So in this situation, there's no way you can kind of guard against both pieces turning out well. So it's just a matter of going really slowly, taking your time, and just really being mindful to keep that blade pressed up against your ruler. Okay, so now we have our two pieces of paper. And I'm going to set these aside. These will be for our noble binding. Um, I'm kind of thinking that, you know, my front cover will look like this. And then my back cover, I think I'm going to have it. So, um, yeah, so it's like scooting out that way. 
So I'm excited about this one. This one's pretty cool. All right. So um, we have got our covers cut. And then the next thing we want to do is cut our pages. So let me get a chunk of our white paper here. Um, my rule of thumb for pages within a book like this, if it's just a thin little book like this, I like to do about six to eight pages. Six is probably a little on the thin side. So let's say eight to 10 pages. Um, there's two reasons for that. One, it gets harder to get the needle through um, and keep everything kind of lined up. Um, but you can definitely make books like this with large, with, you know, thicker pa or more pages. Um, but my rule of thumb, especially if you're, this is your first time making this style of book, it would be to keep it around eight to 10 pages. Um, so our pages are going to be four and a half inches tall because you want your page to be just as tall as your cover. You can see that here. Um, you can see how that is there. And then um, it's personal preference. Some people have the ends of the covers stick out just a little bit. You can see on this one, I didn't. Let me see if I have any examples. I don't think I have any examples here where I have mine. I guess my personal preference over the years has switched from having it stick out a little bit. Now, in this situation or in this example, I am going to have the pages only be five and seven eighths wide as opposed to the six inches because I know that there's probably going to be a little bit of variation and I want to make sure that I don't cut six inch pages and then actually have those extending past my covers. Um, so I'm going to go with five and seven eighths wide uh, and I just want to check the grain on this paper Machine made paper like this is almost always grain tall. So what I will do is cut, let's see, I can get two pieces, um, two, sh two sheets of, two pages per sheet of paper. Um, so I think what I'll do is just gather eight pieces of paper in this bundle, and then I will cut and then I'll have the pages for one book and the pages for another book, all in one cutting. So let me just count this out. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. All right, so again, we want to have it to be five and seven eighths. The one drawback of doing it all with all the pages together is that it does get um, they you got to make sure that they're all lined up correctly. Oops, and I'm realizing I need my longer ruler for this because I need to instead of using these um, tick marks here for the eighths and quarter inches, I need to use the ones at the top of the mat. All right, so what did I say? Five and seven eighths getting that all lined up. Okay. And you can see right down here, I think you can kind of see it. I did my hand for a couple of the slices went just slightly off on that end. So I'm just trimming that back down. And again, that's why I always put the part that I want to use guarded by the ruler. So this little scrap will go in the pile to become little freebie notebooks. And now we'll put the big ruler away since it's cut down. And we'll turn it this way. And now we're just going to cut four and a half inches and four and a half inches. Okay, so I'm going to cut starting at the nine inch. Again, these will be, those little pieces will be extra tiny books. And then now I'm going to do four and a half inches. Okay. 
Okay, so now I have my pages for one book and my pages for another book. And I will say these feel a little bit thin. It feels a little bit too thin. So let's see how it feels to have them together. Hmm. Okay, so I think it actually is better to have them together because this copier paper is very thin. If you had a nicer, higher quality um, copier paper or text weight paper, it would not be as thin, but I think we'll go with 16 pages per book for this. But again, it will vary on what you want to use um, for your book. So I'm gonna set these aside. So now I have my pages for my um, book. I'll have to cut another set of these, but I'll do that off camera. Um, and then I've got my two sets of pages, um, or covers, I mean. So those materials are all pretty much prepped. The other thing that I would suggest um, when you're doing the tutorial that I'll post soon, let me grab it here so I can get it, um, would be having one of these hole punches. This one, let's see if it doesn't show you the dot, but I think it's like a sixteenth of an inch, maybe. It's really small. Um, let me get a scrap piece of paper and I can punch it so you can see what it looks like. But I find that these are a little bit easier to use. So you can see it's smaller than a regular hole punch. Um, but I do find that these are a little bit easier to use than an all when you're doing a book like this. Um, cause the all can, because it's, you know, it's start, it's tapered. Um, you can get inconsistent results and it's very frustrating when you're sewing to have, um, like one hole goes through really easily. And then another, the next hole is not quite as open and all that. So having a, um, hole punch that is a consistent size, it's makes it a lot easier because if you look at the binding, you're going through the hole, multiple times. Um, so you want to make sure that you've got a nice, um, a good size hole so that it, there's plenty of room for all of the thread to go through. Okay. So the very last thing that we're going to do is make our templates for sewing. Um, and I just want to, I've got a couple examples that I want to show you. So I showed at the beginning, these. So this again is the noble binding and this is the hemp leaf binding. These are the two that I'm going to be showing the tutorial. And um, if you can't tell on camera, the red part is the thread. Um, so these are actually sewn templates. Um, but what we're going to do is make, these are a couple here. This is the noble binding template. And then this is the hemp leaf template. And I think it's important to see what it is because especially the hemp leaf, it looks really complicated, but it's just a few holes placed in a certain spot. And that's kind of the mystery of it all. You know, like it's, it's very simple, but once you know the binding, um, it, you can make it look really complicated, but it's, it's very simple. So, um, what I want to, to do as just kind of our last step is get you a template because the very first part of the tutorial that I'm going to do is showing you how to set up your template and then practice sewing on it and then doing the actual sewing of the book. So um, these are going to be four and a half inches high. And what, how wide is this one? This one's I'm sure that I just cut this down from whatever scrap I had. So let's just make this three inches. So again, I'm gonna find my grain. And again, because this is machine made paper, it is grain long. So this is great. I can cut a three inch strip up and down and then I'll cut both of my templates from that. So just cut three inches. And again, if you have other paper that's scrap that you could use, um, that's totally fine. It doesn't have to be three inches. You just need it to be the correct height and a little bit wider than you need it to be at least two inches wide. So then we will just cut them into four and a half inch high pieces.
Okay, so these are going to be our two templates that we'll work on in the tutorial. So um, if you've followed along and if you've hung in there, thank you so much. I know it was kind of an awkward start with the other one being um, the other live stream kind of going. Um, but if you followed along, you, you're going to have your two template pieces made out of cardstock. You've got your pages made out of copier paper, text weight paper. You've got two sets of covers that um, can either be out of a fancier decorative paper or out of a standard scrapbooking piece of paper. And this is what you'll need to get started next time on the actual full tutorial. I'll show you how to sew everything up and we will learn how to uh, make these two different books. So thank you so much for hanging in there and watching till the end. I hope you have a great day and that you come back next week uh, when I post the actual tutorials. Bye.